So we've got the main mechanism in the spreadsheet working. Uh, the user can click on the button and then not hear or hear appear. So we're well on the way to completing this task, but there's still some elements missing. For example, we want to be able to click on the button and we want the time that the student comes into the classroom to appear. And we also want some better formatting effects. Maybe we could format the here and not here cells differently so the user can look and just understand from the colours who's here and who's not here. So we're going to have a look at those things uh, in this video. But firstly, um, I'm not happy with the caption, the text that appears in these buttons. It just says uh, button two. So how might we change that text quickly? Well, we could manually go all through the buttons, but that's not really in the spirit of this video series. Um, so let's go back to how we how the buttons are generated. And remember that the buttons are all generated from a single button. Excel takes the top button and copy pastes it down. So that means changes we make in the top button should be reflected uh, automatically, or at least when we run the code, will be reflected in the other button. So all we actually have to do is to change uh, the top button. And for buttons and shapes in spreadsheets, it's a good idea to think about using symbols. That's because people can um, understand a symbol much faster than having to read text. So let's have a look at uh, some symbol options. If you go to insert, and then over on the right, so outside of your screenshot, over on the right, go to symbol. Uh, then we get this uh, dialog box coming up, and this gives us a choice of character sets, but the main ones are wingdings and webdings, quite curious names for fonts, webdings and wingdings. These are the ones that give you a nice selection of um, symbols that you can incorporate into your spreadsheets. And what would be a useful symbol uh, for us to have? Well, let's go for this tick box here. So I've clicked on the tick box and clicked insert. And then I'm gonna close uh, the symbol dialog box. And we can see that in our button, um, we have a character there that's not what we actually want, but that's because the button is not in Wingdings font yet. So I've gone to the font uh, at the top there, hit uh, typed in Wingdings, and then there we go. We've got our nice, our nice tick box there. So that's an example of how you can use uh, symbols um, to make things look better and to add again that kind of wow factor to your spreadsheets. It's much easier to understand symbols than it is to have to read text. So hopefully now, if we regenerate the buttons, I'm going to delete them all using the delete buttons macro at the bottom, then regenerate them all using copy paste buttons. Hopefully, yeah, we can see they've all got this nice tick box there. So for me, this spreadsheet is, you know, already much, much easier to look at. And I feel like I actually want to interact with it now, uh, certainly more so than before, but it's gonna get even better, hopefully. So I'm just do, doing my testing here, okay. That seems to be working fine. So we've improved um, the appearance of the button there. Um, how might we improve the appearance of this column here? So this column is telling us if the student is here or not. Clearly, we can just read the text and that's fine, but it would be a lot better if there was some visual support for that information. So rather than having to read and assimilate the text, we could just understand a color for example, we can understand the colour much faster than we can read a word. If we could have a colour appearing there, that would, again, would really help us to understand the spreadsheet more efficiently. So how might we do that? Well, maybe you're already thinking of conditional formatting. That's what we're going to apply here. I've just selected the range and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom because we're building this spreadsheet for 15 students, potentially. And then we're going to go home and conditional formatting. Then we can see our conditional formatting options. This is just outside of your screenshot, but I'm going to highlight cells rules and equal to. So that's highlight cells rules and equal to. And if we type in not here, then I can already see 
that the cells that contain that hit are now appearing with this red on pink um, colour scheme, which makes sense to me because being not here um, has a kind of negative, um, although there's legitimate reasons for being absent, it has a kind of negative connotation. So it's sensible to make it um, red, although that is a matter of opinion. You can choose whatever colour suits you. Uh, so let's say OK there. That seems to be working. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. So conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, outside of your screenshot, outside of your screenshot, equal to. And then we're going to do the same thing again. Type in here. And then what other automatic options have we got here? Well, being here, I think, has a positive uh, connotation. So I'm going to go for green there. But you can go for whatever you like. You've got um, some nice default options here. But you can also do your own option. If you go to custom format, you can do any uh, formatting you like. And to be fair, if I was preparing this for a client, you know, the pink and light green, I think we could make that more tasteful and we could make that look better. But for the purposes of this video, um, it does the job and you are um, definitely experiment with the different custom formats you can get. But this is doing the job really nicely. And now we can click the button and you can see the text changes. Because the text changes, um, the conditional formatting rule responds to that, which changes the formatting of the cell. So we've got different elements of Excel combining together to create this really uh, powerful effect. Okay, so we've changed the text in the buttons and we've changed how the text appears in the here or not here column. So another element we wanted to incorporate, and this is going to take us back to the code, is the arrival time. So when we click here, we want the arrival time, so when the student comes in the classroom, you know, the current time to appear uh, in this column, column E. I'm just going to resize column D because I think it's a bit um, wider than it, than it need be. There we go. Let's put some central justification. Alt-H-A-C. Alt-H-A-C on a PC gives you central justification. There we go. And then... I'm talking about uh, this column here. And here we'd like the arrival time uh, to appear. So how might we do that? Well, we're going to have to do it programmatically. We're going to have to do it using the code. And remember, this markers here code is the code that is triggered when somebody clicks the button. When someone clicks the button, the mark as here code is going to be triggered. So could we do something in here um, to allow the time to appear. So effectively, the, the time when the button is clicked, that's what we want to appear in the cell. So how might we do that? Well, we're certainly going to need another line of code, but um, the cell we're kind of targeting, the cell where we want something to change, is next to the cell where we're changing uh, the text from here to not here. So it would make sense to recycle the line of code because it's kind of a similar operation and so let's recycle a previous line of code. There we go. Uh, so clearly at the moment these lines are the same. We're going to have to make some alterations to this line of code to make it display the time. What alterations might we do? Well the next column is one column further along. So this offset command I'm going to change one to two and then we don't want not here uh, to appear. So I'm going to delete that. We, we can actually use the very nice simple command now. Okay, now and uh, Excel understands what the time is and if you use the now command, make something equal to now, Excel will type the current date and time in. So that's a really nice um, line of code there. I have realised I put this on the wrong side of the if um, formula, wrong side of the if uh, statement rather. So let's just slot it in here. Okay, and let's, let's, let's see what happens now. There we go. Okay, something's happened in this column. Okay, I'm going to increase the um, width of the column. Alt H O W, shortcut there. There we go. Okay, let's get a few more of these in. 
There we go. So when we change not here to here, we can see that this is um, a pairing. Very nice. Okay, so this is a good start, but the formatting isn't quite right. I don't think we need to know the date. That's too much information. We don't need to know the date there, but we would like to know the time. So how might we change that? Well, let's go to formats. And let's just, let's just try time. What does that give us? Yeah, what does that give us? Yes, that seems to do the job. It's got the time formatting there. So I'm gonna um, change the column width again now, back to 10. That, and that seems to do the job. Central justification, Alt H A C. There we go, okay. So clicking on the buttons here. There we go, seems to be doing the job. Uh, so that's fine if um, if a student if we're ch changing a student from not here to here, but if we want to change a student from here to not here, say we make a mistake, we would want that time to disappear again because we've got this situation here uh, in rows five and six. So students are not here, uh, but the time is still appearing. Okay, so how might we get rid of that? Well. If we're changing from here to not here, then we need a line of code to clear out that cell. So I've just um, copy pasted the line of code from the other side of the if statement. So I've recycled a line of code there. And then we can just change that to equals nothing. So a good way to um, express equals nothing in Visual Basic is just to use speech marks like this. So let's see what's happening now. Okay, there we go. So if I change a student from here to not here, we can see that the time uh, disappears as we, as we go down. There we go. Okay, good. So th this would be the, you know, the starting point. This would be the starting point. And um, maybe in the next video, we'll look at how we could reset, how we could reset it, because it would be great if we used it for one class, we could click through some of the students here, the times recording, that's all great. But if we wanted to reset it, then you know we don't want to have to go through all the buttons, we don't want to have to go through all the buttons manually. So in the next video, uh, we'll look at resetting it, creating a reset button, um, and we'll look at generally improving the appearance, um, some more formatting techniques, and maybe creating some summary information at the top of the spreadsheet so the teacher can quickly understand how many students uh, are here. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. I'll see you then.